if the work is not going to be at the level that my standards require, then I'm not going to participate. So that is difficult for people, producers mostly, who are accustomed to being able to buy anything. When you come upon someone who can't be bought, that's difficult. So it's taken me a long time, but I embrace my reputation as being difficult. And I figure if you hire me anyway, you know I'm going to be difficult. You're not going to be able to buy me. You're going to have to sway me with some quality. I failed my way to being my own boss. And now I can't imagine actually working for anybody else ever again because, like, I'm the boss. So one of the things about leaving Mother Courage was this experience of being on the edge of a knife. The last time I had anything so public happen was when I lost custody of my children back in the 90s and, and then I was young and I was full of shame and I wanted to hide. But this time there was a clarity about what I was doing and why I was doing it. And there were people who were filling the, the, the social media with hate, hate, hate. And there were people who I didn't know mostly who were supporting me. And it was the most alive I'd ever felt in my life. It was like, oh my God, when you stand in truth, it's polarizing. Because really on this plane that we live on, we are living in a polarity that is in truth, there's a unification of the opposites. So coming out of the whole mother courage, well, the war, um, Rashida speaking mother courage cycle, which lasted a year, I was, um, I really got even more picky about what I would do. And I usually didn't even read scripts when I, when I did jobs. I just looked at who were the people that were going to be in the room. Were they people whose work that I admired? Did I think there was something I could learn, something I could contribute? Let's go play. But, you know, that really was what all of those experiences for the last three years, three for the last year and those three projects had been. And it had been disastrous, disastrous. So much so that I was just like, I, 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 I'm not gonna do me to anyone anymore. I know my standards are so high. Very few people even aspire to the standards I have. So I'm not gonna even go get in the room with people and make them unhappy. I will keep my happy ass at home and read and create on my own. Now, at the same time, I thought, well, maybe it's time for me to transition into being a director. Um, so I reached out to Ava DeVerna. Hey, Ava, would you give me a shot as director? Sorry, Tanya, I can't, uh, can't do it sight unseen. George Wolf, would you, you know, hire me to be your assistant director? Tanya, you can't, you can't go and pick up Starbucks. I can pick up Starbucks. So uh, through a new relationship, I got the opportunity to do a lot of shadowing, and I shadowed for four years. And the gist of shadowing directors on television was that I realized that it, it's it's not as powerful a position as we think of it as being. You are there to uh, execute the wishes of the showrunners and all of the designers of the scene. You are walking into somebody's house, and you've got to do it their way because they know how they run their show. And so at the end of that, with, you know, this three years I'd put into, you don't get paid, you're, you know, spending your money if you fly yourself somewhere and put yourself up. I was like, I could do this with my eyes closed, but nobody's going to give me a shot. I'm like at the bottom of the totem pole of lots of other white guys and women who've done more than me and have more of a relationship and have, quote, paid more dues. It's not going to happen. And so the miracle of that was last summer, I decided, you know, I actually had seen a video with uh, Ava DuVernay talking about how she hadn't gone to film school and she just, she just gave herself the opportunity. And so that's what I did. And I made this film, Red Pill. It is my debut feature film. And I have to say that if it weren't for everyone saying no to me, saying no to all these things I was asking to do, which were adjacent to what I'm doing now, I wouldn't have gotten there. If they'd say yes, I'd be being someone's assistant, I'd be working for someone else, and now I'm working for myself. So Red Pill came to me as an idea. I was visiting a friend in her country house, and this story idea came to me. I asked her if I could use her house. She said yes. Who lets you use their house?